Musical films have been a staple in American cinema ever since the emergence of talkies in the 1920s. Music and video, it seems, were made to be together, and the two have mutually evolved over the course of the last century. The musical film itself, however, has undergone a substantial change since its beginning, brought mostly about by its much shorter cousin, the music video. To truly understand the impact, however, it's important to first look at the emergence of the musical film. In 1923, New York City's Rivoli Theater presented the first motion pictures with sound on film, which synchronized movies with their soundtracks. This brought about the first ever full-length talkie with The Jazz Singer, which appeared in 1927. The sound on film technology made it possible for Al Jolson to perform on camera, thus creating the musical film. This ushered in the golden age of Hollywood, and musicals were commonplace in the cinemas. Audiences were frequently dazzled with elaborate and choreographed musical numbers, all fitting into the overall story of the film. In these musical films, narrative was driven by the characters singing songs in order to enhance the story. Musicals not only included the presence of music, but a shared integration of music, character, and plot. Looking at the cinematography of mid-20th century musical films, long shots and minimal camera movements were typical. There were very few cuts or special effects, and the emphasis was not so much a visual one as it was an emphasis on narrative. Even with the dance numbers, the musical productions told complete stories in themselves, and musical films facilitated the narrative more than any visual element. Of course, musical films were not the only source of music at the time. With the rise of rock and roll and pop music, younger generations began to demand that their new genres be on screens. The result was the Panoram Soundy, which gave way to the Scopatone jukebox in the 60s. These were visual jukeboxes with miniature movie attachments that screened videos of the songs being played. Scopatone films were a forerunner to music videos, and they provided fans with the sight as well as the sound of the performer. This defined a new characteristic of pop music. It required the visually projected personality of the performer in order to be successful. Watching performances of pop music was a task that required effort, however. One had to go to the local diner or record shop, or wait for performances on television programs like The Ed Sullivan Show. There was no convenient way to watch musical performances. But that all changed August 1st, 1981. This was the day that Music Television, or MTV, aired its first ever music video. The Buggles' Video Killed the Radio Star. This began a 24-hour per day broadcast of music videos, with which MTV quickly defined itself through its own distinct, flashy style. I want my MTV. Young audiences everywhere were drawn in by the exciting flashiness and design of MTV. As one critic put it, an entire new generation of viewers became visually hooked on the assaultive, grabbing power of MTV's rapid cutting. Yeah, too much is never enough. MTV took the focus away from the narrative and musical performance. Instead of the visual images accompanying the song, it seemed to now be the other way around with the onslaught of cross cuts, jump cuts, and the stirring together of different colors, speeds, and special effects. The story was no longer that important. To the younger generation, musical films from Hollywood's golden age suddenly lost all regard, and the laid-back, story-driven style was labeled as outdated. The rapid MTV style became the norm to keep the attention of younger audiences, and videos and films that did not mimic an MTV music video often did not find success. Musical films began to disappear because of this. In an MTV culture where narrative was unimportant, an entire film genre grounded in musical storytelling had no footing. Musical performances in film became all but extinct. You'll never look at music the same way again. Instead, popular music infiltrated Hollywood in such films as Flashdance in 1983, the MTV style became apparent with frequent montage sequences to the tune of popular songs with virtually no plot, decorated with a telltale, rapid cutting. Unlike past musical films where story and song were integrated, popular films valued the soundtrack over the story. As a result, we get films that are made up of a series of what feel like music videos that don't do much to move the story along. This style of MTV storytelling, or lack thereof, continued in popular films through the end of the 20th century, and rarely did a musical enter movie theaters. That is, until 2001, with the release of Moulin Rouge. Dubbed as the MTV musical, Moulin Rouge redefined the musical film genre entirely, ushering in a new wave of original musical stories and remakes of stage musicals. The film is noted for its breakneck pace and rhythm, as well as its use of popular music instead of show tunes. This drew the MTV generation into the theaters and renewed their belief in the value of musical films. Much of the elements of MTV are evident today through the flashiness of many musical films, although the importance of story in these films is returning. Once thought a dead genre, musicals have now moved on to television and are more evident than ever. 
Despite the gradual return of narrative, the influence of MTV has left a necessity for the visual elements in musical films. The overall production level of the musical film has grown substantially as a result, and visually stunning numbers are almost required nowadays. Exciting cinematography, extravagant sets, and choreography are all musts if a musical film is to be a success. The musical film of today has had a number of influences and represents the history of music and film in general. Musical films from the Golden Age remain meaningful with their dazzling productions that wowed audiences at the time, even if they don't fill the bill of contemporary musical films. MTV's original campaign to disregard all old forms of music was not the most sensitive method. It definitely had a powerful impact on the future of musical films. As Lisa Gittleman points out, media are more than technologies. They are the social norms and practices of the time in which they are used. Despite MTV's approach, it couldn't wipe out a half century worth of musical films that were so ingrained in American history. It did, however, take the world by storm as a cultural centerpiece of the 80s. The new post-MTV social norms brought about in the last part of the 20th century are what are being projected in musical films today. The influence of MTV on musical films isn't a negative thing, however. In fact, many modern musical films are some of the best pictures to ever be released. It's simply a new style fitting of a new generation. Despite what the Buggles so infamously sang on that first MTV broadcast, one form of media will not kill another. Music videos did not kill the musical film.